Good afternoon, good evening, buenos dias, bonjour, ni hao, annyeonghaseyo. How is everyone doing? Now this is J League Power Plays, ready to sparkle your day. Okay, Sean, who is first to toast? Jordan Crooks. It's Crooks, isn't it? We think we, we think it's pronounced Crooks. We apologise to him if it's not. But this no. is some goal, isn't it? Oh, Ooh. this is a Belgian beauty. Look at that. Do you reckon he meant it? Uh, well, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm I reckon not he too did. Sure. Handing an L to Kawasaki Frontale and this is Leandro. This is this is like a very different goal, but it's so nice, isn't it? Like there's so little space there to move in, but they make that tiny bit of space and then killer instinct. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, zero backlift. Next up, Yasushi Endo of Kashima Antlers. <laughs> wow. How'd you like that? He seems to have been around forever, didn't he? And he's so good. Yeah, he nearly caresses the ball into the top corner. And we have Junior Santos. Yeah, this is a bit like the Leandro one. Like, yeah, it is. Quick one, two in, in a tight space and then burst of pace. And yeah, no chance for the keeper and some moves as well. That's like you on the dance floor, Harry. Yeah, <laughs> a little bop at the end that we all love. <laughs> Diego Oliveira. Oh. Yeah. You can't give him like a yard like that, can you? It wasn't even a yard, was it? Half, and he's not yeah. even celebrating. Easy for Probably him. Like 10 centimeters. But <laughs> quality finish there, too. And here, Fujimoto. And this, this cut over here, that's a great touch there. Yeah. Nice. Like, this is another one. He doesn't really put any power, just enough to, to stroke it into the mm. corner. Lovely stuff. And here we go. Douglas Vieira. Ooh. Oh, Diamond Douglas. Look at that finish. Have you been rehearsing these or are they just coming out? <laughs> I've been looking at Peter Jury's commentating, mate. <laughs> Diamond Douglas. This one, this is a good goal, but what, what on earth was the keeper up to? Yes, this is some serious communication malfunction. Yeah. Over. Yeah, but still, 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 you know. But yeah, still, I, I wouldn't have scored from there, so. Yeah. Yep. I would have put it in the stands, probably. <laughs> I probably couldn't kick it that far. Right. Here we go. Yeah, All right. This mate. is proper English football. Long ball over the top. Mate, let's call him Virgil van Iwanami. <laughs> mate, wow. What a pass. Yep. Van Dyke would be proud. And we have Wacky Zaka. Yes. Great awareness. Yeah, typical frontale stuff. Yeah, isn't I was about to say that. This is like a typical Kawasaki goal. Like, it doesn't look like there's a chance on. And then mm. suddenly the ball's in the back of the net and everyone's going, well, what, what happened there? So effortless. And then it's this. Cheeky one. Yeah, look, look at Kamai. He's like, he's ne nearly throwing himself to the ground. And then just with his, what, what do we call that? A peck. We'll say he pecked it in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a peck. <laughs> it's definitely a peck. Oh, I love this goal from Esaka. Yeah. Yeah, great little finish there. He does well to hold the defender off too, I think. Like, it looks fairly straightforward, but at any point, he could have lost the ball. So yeah, very, very good to keep his composure. We have Oki now. We've got a keeper. Oh, oh, yes. Very quick off his line. Lovely great stuff. Great stuff. Schmeichel-esque. Yes, very Schmeichel-esque. <laughs> and another one talking of, yeah, European goalkeepers. Oof. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. He's done really well ever since he's joined Yokohama FC, yeah. right? Outstanding. Yeah. Looks like a great signing. Mm. As was this guy. Jakob. How many times have we covered him? Seems like every month place. he's on, definitely. Yeah. Great goalkeeper. Very yeah. busy goalkeeper, but a great goalkeeper. This is silly. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. No one's stopping that. Yeah. He deserves the Sean Carroll adjective silly. And this one's silly too. He's got two of them, hasn't he? I think Eduardo. There's another one coming up. Oh. It's jokes. Oh, they love it. Got the celebration down as well. Sorry about that one, Jakob. And then Ueda. We haven't seen much of this, have we? No. It was, yeah, yeah, it was a weird one, that one. There's no pressure on him, but he just went, okay, if you're not going to try and tackle me. Mm. And then this. When you're in the box, try to get something on it. Yeah. 
they happen. This is like kind of pub football, you know, on a Sunday, after a heavy night on the town, just anything, centre back in the box. Oh, great turn. Yep. Through the legs. I think he's got another one in a minute, isn't he? On some moves oh, that as well. was a dab. Yep. That was a Pogba-esque dab. Oh, and this. Pure body power. He slots it in. Yeah, stuff. having a cheeky little bop, dancing into <laughs> porn. Love it. Okay, and this we've missed. We've missed for a while these Cristiano goals. Yeah. Boom. I think he's been had a few injuries. He's been playing different positions, but anywhere around the penalty area. Mm. And you know what he can do. What a goal! And Great. he looks happy with it. Everyone, the celebration. Yep. Fantastic stuff. Hello everyone and welcome to the J-League Monthly, ready to give you some majestic magic that the J-League boasts. Now, I'm Harry Sugiyama and today I am accompanied by the forever charming Sean Carroll. How are you, Sean? Hello, 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 Harry. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Um, kind of like uh, infested with football, obviously the J-League too, but with everything kind of like you know exploding in the premiership and the champions league too uh not getting too much sleep and yourself yeah pretty much the same we've got yeah there's the j league there's the levan cup there's the premier league champions league the wii league started now so there's there's so much football happening i just yeah and sean we've got to um speak about these uh big coming backs into the j league you know we've got nagatomo and we have sakai too and inui what do you make of all that that then I think obviously, you know, having them back on the pitch in the J League is going to be big. It, it, you know, having players that good coming in back and playing in the league is great for the fans, especially of those clubs, but for, for fans in general. And I think also off the pitch, those guys are kind of almost in that first generation where, where a lot of players have gone over to Europe and stayed there for a long time. So they're going to come back and they're going to be able to show the, the young players now coming through, whether they're already in the first team or on the verge of the first teams. They're going to be showing them now what what it's necessary to to be professional, what's needed to to push on and, and really get to that top level. So I think hopefully, yeah, we're going to see results on the pitch and we're going to see some some great like plays from them and things. But I think also the effect sort of in the coming years as well. We'll probably start hearing about players at their clubs talking about the impact that these guys had coming in and mm. and sort of helping them to develop. So yeah, fantastic news for for everyone involved. I think. Right, Sean. Right, everyone. Let's first of all hit up the menu. So what are we giving you today? We're going to give you Australians. Fantastic Australian players have spiced up the history of the J-League. And also at the end of the program, we've got some special news for you. So, Sean, last time we had a chat, um, we talked about uh, some Australian players, you know, who've worked their magic on the J-League. And here we are. Yeah, I think as you as you touched upon before, like there's been Australian players and, and coaches kind of throughout the years in the J League, but but recently in the last couple of years or so, yeah, there does seem to be a a market increase um, in terms of yeah, obviously managers who will, will come on to in a bit, the success they've had, and the players too, um, really making a mark in the in the J League, bringing things that maybe mm. some players, you know, Japanese local players don't have, adding something a bit different, and I think also yeah, it's obviously showing people back home in Australia what the J League is all about thankfully now they can they can watch games online and things and mm. see their players playing here so yeah I think it's, it's working out well for everybody um has been very impressive and the timing of us doing this is you know it's uncanny because what do we have we have the World Cup qualifiers coming up on October the 12th that's going to be a big game isn't it that was it. So we've got, there's this history building up, which is great. Um, Japan sadly got off to a slow start with the defeat against Oman. So they, they can't afford to lose. If anything, they have to win this game really. Often when they play Australia in the qualifiers, both teams kind of go, well, as long as we don't lose, have a point. Yeah. Each. But I think Japan have to win this. So, and, you know, there's going to be a couple of players probably in the Australia squad who are playing in the J League. So there's going to be that little kind of those niggly contests on the pitch. And yeah, should be great fun. Definitely. Okay, then let's crack it open. Here we go. Fantastic Aussie players just for you guys. So the first Australian player to work their magic on the J-League was back to 1997. And this year, 
who became the gaffer of Hiroshima, of San Fretcher Hiroshima, was Eddie Thompson, who actually used to be um, the manager for the Australian national side. And who did he bring in? Tony Popovich, the center back. And also Graham Arnold, who's the current Australian national coach. That's right, isn't it, Sean? Yep, there's quite a few of those, aren't there? There's coaches, like they, they came through, Australians who came through in the in the J-League era, and now they're, they're coaching. Obviously, Graham Arnold, he had a very short spell in the in the J-League as well, coaching Big Alta Sentinel, but yeah, in charge of their the national team now. Uh, I think, yeah, Corica as well, Mark Corica. Rudan as well. Yeah. yeah, he used to play for Wolves, right? Yep. Yeah. And yeah, Popovich, who we saw before, obviously he's won the Asian Champions League with Western Sydney. So they obviously picked up something in their time here and uh, it served them well. Oh, yeah, I've started to remember this. Yeah, it's coming back to you slowly. It's coming back. It's coming back. Oh, Bosna. He scored some silly goals, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> like a typical Roberto Carlos goal. He, this is another one. They both against Reds. Oh my! Look at that. That's a rocket. Yep. Silly. Yeah. Josh oh, Kennedy with the hair. Yeah. I mean, his presence, Kennedy, for the yeah. national side too, but also um, for Nagoya. But he was vital. Yeah, the year they won the the league, I think it was 2010. They had him up front. They had Danielson in midfield, Tulio at centre back, and Narazaki in goal. That that kind of spine through the team just saw them through. I think he was top scorer two years in a row. I've got a feeling he shared it with Maeda one year and then got yeah. it the next year. He was, yeah, just unplayable, even after he chopped off his hair. Oh, and uh, with Tulio too, right? Yep, yep, Tulio was there too. Oh, Mark Milligan. Mark Milligan. Lovely, that was like me for the for Peace Haven Youth. I used to have a long throw when I was about nine. That was the <laughs> weapon we had. It wasn't quite as long as his though. Yeah, I mean, the strength in the box that they managed to get out is from the, the long throw, which is again, silly. Yeah. And here we go. Oh, man, he was a tough player, wasn't he? he yeah. He didn't really kind of, you know, play much um, uh, in the J-League, but I mean... He was a very and, physical, but I remember he had a very physical player in the Premier League. And you can see there he's bursting out of the shirt, incredible Hulk-esque. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he played for Blackburn and oh, what is this? I remember this. This I remember we talked about this last year. I think yeah, Thomas Deng, what a goal! Thomas Deng, he's a defender as well, which is just yeah. silly. Mitch Duke too. Yeah. yeah, he did well at Shimizu a few years ago, and now he's back mm. and and doing really well for Okayama down in J two. So could have him back in J one in a couple of years. Who knows? Taggart. Yeah, he had a couple of injuries, I think, at the start of the season, but he scored a lot of goals when he was in Korea, and now he's now he's getting the minutes. He's he's finding his way back to goal again. So yeah, very good news for for Cerezo, I think. And here we go. Who's this guy? We haven't spoken about him yet, have we? You know, we have to speak about this guy, <laughs> Mitch. Every month, he's always what? in our you know in our pockets when it comes to this program. Because yeah. Silly. He's, I think he's broken the record again, hasn't he, for for clean sheets, probably for for saves, yeah, for everything. Oh. But they don't give up many shots. But but when they do, he normally normally there to stop yeah. it. Beautiful, amazing. So Sean, we ended with Mitch Langerak, and Mitch is about to break another record, right? Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, every month there's something. Um, it looks like, well, he may have broken it by the time this goes out. We're not sure. He's on the cusp of um, overtaking Kennedy's record. Of I think it was Kennedy's record is 133 games in the J-League. And Langerak has either just broken it or just about to break it. So, yeah, another another accolade for him there to add on to his, uh, his increasingly heavy trophy cabinet. Yeah, incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, just looking back at the video that we just released just now, you know, um, looking at that array, We've had a few characters um, from Australia um, working in the J-League, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so many of them, as we sort of touched upon before, they made an impact in the teams at the time they came. They picked up stuff when they've left as well. But looking back at those highlights, like, it seems like it wasn't that long ago, but Kennedy, when he was scoring his goals, it's over. It's like 10 years ago now. So yeah. It makes me feel old. But he was, yeah, he was very, very good. Like, just lethal in the penalty area you know it's not maybe not necessarily something that you'd associate with australians normally japanese teams would bring in brazilians or you know kind of right. flair players 
but he was so good up front at just being that point, holding the ball up as well. Mm. Um, yeah, Kennedy was fantastic, just fitted that team perfectly. Um, but yeah, crazy to think it's already 10 years ago. Okay. Now, here's a quiz for you, Sean. Um, with oh, your me expertise, again? I didn't do very well last month. With your expertise, you may you know, hit this on the nail. Um, uh, we've got some J-League goodies for you. Uh, oh, really? You hit it on the nail, but it's very, very difficult. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, you can't be that confident I'm going to get it right then if you're offering me, uh, offering me treats. Yeah, okay. massive treats too. Now, this is the question. How many Australian players have played for the J-League, and this includes J2 and J3. How many have played? Yeah. So it's not, so if they if they signed for a club, but didn't get on the pitch, doesn't count? It doesn't count, you know. Oh God. Yeah. They so this need is from, so from 1997. To the pitch. From 1997, so that's what, 25 years. Yeah. Go for an average of two a year, that's 50 plus a bit of chain let's go for let's go for 58 58 is that your final answer uh, yeah I mean, yeah yeah why not 58 okay okay the answer is my friend i'm sorry 35 that's only it 35 players yeah this is weird isn't it only 35 yeah i think it's a fix i don't i don't believe you, you just don't want to give me those goods <laughs> Where can I look this up? Where's the official record? Oh, the official record was just <laughs> mailed to me um, from the directors of the show like a minute right. ago. So, you okay. know, I, I trust them. I trust them. But apparently only 35. Only 35. Well, yeah. there you go. Shows you I, I know absolutely nothing. I'm looking forward to. So, yeah. What was it last time? I think last time, didn't I say 35 and it was 60 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So, right. Next time I need to know. There's, there's a pattern emerging. Yeah, there's a pattern emerging. Okay. I've got right. it. Okay, and not just the players too. Let's talk a bit about the managers, mm. who, you know, um, who've uh, worked their show, who've worked their business um, in the J League. Um, the first manager was Arnold, going back to 2014 um, for Australia in Japan, uh, managing Sendai. And it was obviously not just him. Recently, uh, we've had the incredible Postica Guru, you know, um, managing a Celtic now. Uh, he he took um, F. Marinos to some um, serious silverware. Um, and also we had Musket, or, he, you know, he actually took over um, after Posica grew. Uh, and we get looking at J2 to Yamagata uh, with Kromowski. Um, quite a few of them, quite a few gaffers, managers out there. Yeah, it is. it's interesting, isn't it? Like Arnold now is at the the Australian national team things didn't really work out for him at Sendai but obviously he's a he's a good coach and yeah um when Ange when Postacoglu came over he had a reputation as, as having won things back in Australia he'd also won things with the with the national team there um but yeah he not only did he like did he win the league with Marinos but he he was sort of praised for the way that he introduced that very particular style of football very aggressive attacking yeah. football Kevin Muscat has come in uh Postacoglu did left such an impression at Marinos, they went, right, we want another one of those, please. And they got uh, brought in another Aussie straight away and he's yeah. pretty much hit the ground running and the, yeah, the football's, the football's continuing. So hmm. yeah, fantastic. Interesting to see what happens from now on if we get any more Aussies coming over and uh, showing what they can do. Yeah. And every so often we've got the Japanese player who goes to Australia and plays over there, you know, and, and um, sometimes Japanese teams uh, face up to a lot of Australian competition uh, with um and with the ACL too. So obviously, you know, with the big national game um, coming up, yeah, um, hand to hand. Um, and Japan and Australia have got very good relations, but we will see how that game unfolds, huh? Yeah, fingers crossed. It goes yeah. well. Fingers crossed. fingers crossed. Okay, um, that's it for now. Um, oh yes, I need to um, talk about something very, very important. Uh, the Levan Cup semi-final. Second leg is up for grabs, people. You know, it's going to be out there um, on YouTube. Um, and who's going to the final? This is a big question. So definitely, 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 people, keep your eyes, your ears open for this one. And uh, you'll be able to see it on October the 10th is when it's actually going to happen. Who do you think is going to the final? I've got a quiz for you. Who do you think is going to get to the final? They can edit this out <laughs> if you get it wrong. But we got a we had we didn't speak about um, Urawa's incredible comeback, right? Yeah, of course. 
against uh was it against kawasaki yeah it was against kawasaki yeah. and yeah. makino makino came in and was playing up front yep and the man just you know put it in i'm gonna i'm gonna guess urawa's gonna um maybe possibly work their magic you know what about okay. yourself oh i don't know i don't know it's difficult to call uh who else is there tokyo's in this tokyo won it last year yeah I don't think many teams are going to win it two in a row. Um, let's let's go for Nagoya, shall we? So as long as our Danish friend Junker is not going to get his hair glistened up like Makino, you know, maybe, maybe they may just get through to the finals then. <laughs> right, J League monthly. Uh, we're scheduled to kick off again, um, possibly at the end of October. Fingers crossed. Yes, for me. And from Sean, that's it then. Thank you, people. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much, Harry. See you soon. Take care. Right. Take care. Stay safe, people. Bye bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, subscribe, push notification. Like, subscribe, push notification.